Well, howdy again, folks, and welcome back once again to the house that never sleeps. Good to see you back again. I've got a, a Gatorade right over here, if you'll just excuse me for one moment, because I am really thirsty. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about oiling your fingerboards and your uh, bridge on acoustic guitars. Uh, man, you guys been sending bombarding me. I've been getting bombarded in Facebook questions about, uh, look who's here, about whether or not to oil your fingerboards. And if you oil your fingerboards, why not oil down inside the guitar? Well, come on. You don't put oil down inside your guitar, folks. Now, you can go to Martin's website. And it tells you on there uh, not to use uh, lemon oil, I think is what it says. Not to use lemon oil on your fingerboards that can damage the finish. Or not to, you know, use it on your guitar. It, the Martin website does not tell you not to oil your fingerboard. I mean, you know, oil and fingerboards is just something that over the many years of my life, I've always heard that's just something everybody knows you do it. You know, you get a... a your guitar gets dirty, you polish it, clean it up. You know, if you get a cut, a wound, you doctor it. If you break a string, you put a new string on. You oil your fingerboard now and then. You can overdo it, yeah. Uh, a couple times, three times a year is plenty enough times to put oil on your fingerboard. But if you have, uh, like, rosewood, that open grain uh, wood, there's no protection there. And, uh, you should oil it. I mean, take it from me. I don't care what you see or hear on YouTube. You can find about anything you want to find on YouTube if you look enough. But, uh, you know, that's just something that, that I, everybody knows that you do it. You know what I mean? Everyone knows that they've always known it. All the years that, uh, that I've been on this planet that I can remember, you know, oiling your, your fingerboard is just a, something you occasionally do uh, to treat it, you know, or care for it. The, uh, that open grain can dry out. It's like the inside of your guitar. You know, it's left open so you have some means of control over it. Now, if I can get Lily off of me for a minute. This has got a, this is a Blue Ridge, it's got a rosewood fingerboard. And the big question I've been getting is, okay, you put oil on the fingerboard, why do you not put it inside the guitar? Well, like I said in another video, that's the only means of control you have over how much moisture gets into this wood or out of it if it's over humidified. You know, the finish is to protect the wood, yes. And, you know, no moisture or very little obviously is going to get through the finish, but you don't put oil inside your guitar or on every crack. I mean, you want to keep oil out of those cracks and dents and stuff, you know. In fact, you should seal those cracks and dents so no oil or anything can get in. But the fingerboard is open grain. It's a different story. If you've went uh, 50 years and never oiled your fingerboard and it hasn't busted or cracked, you're a very lucky person. Uh, I'm going to put a link down below here, and I want you guys to click on it and go to that site. It's Martin's uh, YouTube channel, and they tell you, they even show you how to order, uh, to oil your fingerboard. The guy even shows you how to do it. And this is Martin we're talking about. Uh, it's just, you know, like I said, if your guitar gets dirty, you clean it. If you break a string, you put a new string on if you're going to take your guitar somewhere, you put it in the case. You take a shit, you wipe your ass. Uh, occasionally, you oil your fingerboard. You know what I mean? Especially those open grain ones. Now, some guitars have like a, a maple fingerboard that's covered with uh, finish of some kind. And you, you can't get oil to that. It's sealed. But we're talking about rosewood and open grain woods that are not sealed. Uh, People ask me on Facebook all the time what I like, what I use or would recommend. I recommend linseed oil. Uh, linseed oil solidifies. It doesn't collect dust. It goes into those grains. 
wipe it on lightly, leave it a few minutes and wipe it off, and wipe it on again lightly, leave it a few minutes, wipe it off, and your fingerboard is sealed for a while. Six months, you know, a couple, maybe three times a year is plenty enough to put that in there to protect that wood. You know what Martin recommends? Click the link below and go check it out. Martin recommends 3-in-1 oil to uh, put on your fingerboard. That's what they recommend. They recommend some kind of wax, too. I can't remember what it was. It was like a liquid, and you rub it on, and it solidifies, just like linseed oil does. It turns to kind of a waxy-like coat. But uh, their website just says not to use uh, lemon oil, I think is what it says. Not to use lemon oil. Uh, it's like they assume you know. I mean, they wouldn't even mention that if oiling your fingerboard was not an issue or something you should never do. You, you know, they wouldn't even mention it. But they did mention it. They told you not to use lemon oil. I believe it's what the guy said. And then on their YouTube channel, they tell you to use, if you're going to do it, 3-in-1 oil. Uh, huh. Some of the questions I've been getting, man, on Facebook are so weird. Uh, I guess you're seeing it on YouTube, but I'm here to tell you the facts. Oil your fingerboard occasionally. I wouldn't necessarily recommend 3-in-1 oil, but Martin recommends it, so, you know. And, yeah, if you soak the fingerboard in oil every time you change strings, eventually you're probably going to have a frets pop up or the inlay fall out. That's too much oil. Uh, that's a way overkill. You just need to do it maximum four times a year at the most, you know. Uh, yeah, some of the questions that's coming in to me about the type of woods used in acoustic guitars. Uh, someone said they saw, someone was saying that uh, it didn't matter what kind of wood went into an acoustic guitar. If it was built right, it would sound just like a Martin Sounds or a Blue Ridge or whatever. It would have that quality sound. That's uh, bullshit. Totally wrong. Martin and all these big companies, Gibson and Taylor, very carefully select the type of woods that go into their guitars. You can't just build a guitar out of uh, some shit you got laying around the house and make it sound like this guitar back here, or this one even, when it's got good strings. These strings are shot. I'm not even going to play it because they are nasty. But you can't just uh, cheers. You can't just uh, stick any kind of wood into a guitar and build it and make it sound like these guitars do. They, a lot of them use the Adirondack spruce top and uh, rosewood back and sides. There's a reason they use those woods. There's a reason it costs so much for a guitar like that one right th back there behind me. And like I said in another video, they have bought, they went after Brazilian rosewood, okay? They bought all of it up. It's almost extinct now. Then they went after East Indian Rosewood, and now they've almost bought all of it up. Now they're just going for Indian Rosewood, and pretty soon it's just going to be, well, it's already, you just as long as it's Rosewood, you know. The video that, uh, that I saw, and I don't want to get no cyber war started, and I'm not mentioning names, but the video that you guys linked me to, the guy was holding the Martin guitar up telling you it has Rosewood back and sides. Well, it's a Martin guitar, but it does not have, the video I saw, that guitar don't have rosewood back and sides. And you could probably tell it in the sound of it if you heard it. But, you know, they didn't buy up all that rosewood, you know, just as a hobby and spend that much money. Those companies know the build is important. Yes, the build is very important. It is is as important as the wood is. But you can't do it. You can't just uh, build a guitar out of whatever lumber, any kind of lumber or wood, and make it sound the way Martin guitars or some of these Blue Ridges sound. It's impossible to do. And these guitar companies know that. They also know that you are supposed to occasionally oil your fingerboard. I don't know where you people are hearing all of this stuff at, but man, some of the questions that I'm getting <laughs> in uh, Facebook is just... Uh, Good Lord, 
I don't even know how to answer them. They're just so wrong, man. It's just totally wrong information. If you're getting it from YouTube or wherever you're getting it from, I, I would uh, do my homework if I was you before basing any beliefs on that. But yeah, uh, Martin recommends 3-in-1 oil. I was kind of shocked to see that. But uh, do oil your fingerboards, people. Occasionally, you need to care for them. And like I said, linseed oil is what I like to use because you put that stuff in there, it solidifies, it seals that open grain for a while, you know. Keeps out the elements of your uh, skin oil and sweat, salt, whatever, you know. It keeps all that stuff, protects your fingerboard from all that stuff. And it's left open grain so you do have some kind of control over, you know, how dry the wood gets. Uh, rosewood is an oily wood anyway. And I'm not a luthier. I don't know a whole lot about woods. I'm a technician. There's a big difference, a huge difference. I don't know shit about building a guitar. I wouldn't know. Well, I kind of got an idea where to start, but I have no intentions of even wanting to learn to build a guitar. I'm a tech. I work on them. I can always, always, always improve your guitar. Uh, guaranteed. Some way I can improve it. Make it better than it is. But, uh, yeah, man, they all know specific woods, and they're going after it like, uh, you know, it's the last, and it really is almost nearing the end of the rosewood thing. Taylor's even got videos out on uh, other woods they're using besides ebony and rosewood to replace, uh, you know, to replace it. I'm trying to find other woods to use in place of those. I can't remember what that video is called. It's on YouTube. If you look around, you'll find it. But uh, anyways, I just wanted to make this a quick video and tell you, yes, uh, oil your fingerboards, oil your bridges, on acoustic guitars, do oil that. Don't soak it in oil or your fingerboard so much to, that the inlays fall out or the frets pop up. That's too much oil. You just need to rub it on, leave it a few minutes and rub it off and do that a couple of times and put your new strings on and you're good for six months or so roughly about that and you should do it again uh, that's just uh, I don't know why you would even consider putting oil down in the hole <laughs> good God that's the only means of uh, control that you're going to have over if the guitar is too dry and you need to get humidification into it that's where you do it, down inside that raw wood in there. That's where it absorbs that humidity and brings it back up to a, a safe level. So cracks like this right here doesn't happen. I think you can see that from that far away, maybe. The whole back of this guitar is busted, and it's from being so dry. That happened before I got the guitar. But, uh, yeah, man, oil your fingerboards. Do not put any oil. The only thing you're going to ever put down inside of here is a uh, maybe a cup with water or a wet cloth or something in it seal the hole off so it can absorb that water get the humidification up to 45 to 55 percent temperature roughly around 70 75 degrees and a good chance you'll never have any trouble with your guitar or any cracks or anything like that i have seen rosewood fingerboards chipped on the sides and busted from being so dry um, you know, give them a drink of oil now and then. Keep them clean. Give them a drink of oil. I recommend linseed there again because it solidifies and seals all those open grains for a while. And it's protected for a while. Six months or so, maybe a little less than that. Three months even, do it again. But don't do it every time you change your strings. Uh, so hopefully that will catch me up on all of the funky Facebook questions I've been getting. My God, I, <laughs> some of them are really strange, but I wanted to make this video because I got so many messages about should I oil my fingerboard, should I not? And if I do, should I oil inside the guitar? No, never ever put oil inside your guitar. Don't put anything inside of it except humidification. It's a means of humidifying it or drying it out if it's over humidified. And I have got a lot of them in here over humidified too. So, you know, that's why it's left uh, raw, so to speak, inside. 
finished, protects the outside, the inside is left unfinished, so you have some control over the uh, dryness or the moistness or wetness of the wood. So there you have it folks, do oil your boards, uh, do pick your woods carefully that you're going to build an acoustic guitar, especially acoustic guitar, because it does make all of the difference. Now that is rosewood. This is not a Martin guitar, but that is rosewood. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope that helps some of you all with uh, those funky questions. I uh, hope it uh, straightens you out on some things you were um, evidently picking some bad info up on. Cheers. I'll see you again soon.